<laughs> and welcome to Space Engineers. A game where if you can think of it, you can probably build it. So welcome to my channel. Uh, I am Jedman. And we are going to take a look at where I think is a good place to start. So I would say learning to survive is a good place to start. Let me back up a wee minute and check so I've got experimental mode on and I don't need that one just now. I'm going to switch that off to flip and we'll get back to it. There we go. There we go. Okay, so entering the new game. I strongly suggest the first jump. You should do that. It's good. It teaches you the controls. This is basically WASD. It's, it's quite basic, the mouse. Um, it's very good. It's pretty quick as well. You should be able to do it in what? I think it's about half an hour or an hour. It's really not that long. Learning to survive is the next one. So, this is pretty good. Um, as you can see here, restore an old outpost to act as your base of operations and explore the remains of what was once a thriving industry left behind. Learn about space engineering or pick a fight. The choice is yours. This is where your career begins. Now, I think all of these here are done in what they call vanilla. Later on you can add mods, scripts, etc, things like that to add more things into your game. A lot of them are just uh, make things look better, some things make things work better, like scripts, etc. But anyway, we'll get to that at a different time. For today, we're going to learn to survive. So, click start. And we're already booting in. Oh, my friend's popped on. So, let's just wait a little minute for it to load up. Aha! Now, first thing we're going to quickly do is set up a save as. So here we are. Here am I. Hello. How do you do? <laughs> Hit V. You change your view. So what we have here is a small platform with a few different items nearby that are being fixed up to be able to use them. So what do we have? Let's go on. We have uh, a survival kit here. Survival kits are very, very important. So, let's push this button. Start task. Ow! My heart. Survival kit can produce a small amount of ingots from stone. Produce basic components from ingots. It allows you to recharge your energy as well as health. And allows you to respawn everything you need to get started. Now, one wee thing it doesn't say there. I'm just holding my left button down so you can use F or your left button as long as I've got nothing in my hand. For instance, if I had a grinder, that doesn't work because it's trying to um, grind up. <laughs> That's my blood touch. But there we go. That section is now complete. Yes, what it doesn't tell you there. Oh, there we go. The tip is there. Connect H202 generator with a survival kit to recharge your hydrogen and oxygen as well. So, going to H2 generator, what's up? There's a cargo container. This will hold a good amount of items. And it already is. Ooh, holding a little pistol, I'll take that. Some rounds. Fantastic. So, what's this one over here? Ooh, oxygen and hydrogen. This is your O2 H2 generator. Which is both from ice. Start task. To replace oxygen hydrogen in the survival kit, you need power. A working conveyor connection between the H2O2 generator as well as the survival kit and ice in the H2O2 generator. Trying to oxygen hydrogen at a survival kit. So, 
pop over here. Try it out. If you look down the bottom left, oxygen and hydrogen is not connecting. So, we're going from here to here. And you see these connectors connecting them all. It's got yellow here, so that green institute is good. Yellow institute, it's not good. Aha, I see the problem. No. To figure out how to fix, popped out our welder, and then we see we need some interior plates, and some motors, and some small little tubes. But you're in this survival mission, you'll find a cargo container, usually within each of the sections that we go to, which hold the most, if not all, the parts that you require to do the quests at hand. So, in here, so let's get see all our parts. There's a few different ways to do this sort of thing. You've got, uh, as you can see here, I'm hovering over this box. It states, withdraw components for build planner. Hold control for 10 times that amount. Here's the shortcut for conveyor port interaction. Middle mouse button, default withdraw. Control middle mouse button, withdraw 10 times and keep blocking build planner. Alt control middle mouse button control. Build planner doesn't even affect us right now. So we'll ignore that just now and I'll show you the simple ways. So I can move 100 computers over. From here, I can double click to move all items. Or if I hold control, I can hold and move 10. I can also hold the right mouse button down and tell it that I want 15, let's say. And it will move 15. Now, note also made that a separate thing. You can tell it to go to the same bit. It's fine. Um, I needed some small steel tubes, so I'll just grab 10 of those. Uh, construction components. I'll have 20 of those in the interior plate, I think it was. It may even be the motor, so I'll just take 10 of just in case. I can't remember off the top of my head. There we go. That is now fixed. So now, we go to the survival kit, uh, we'll hold F this time, O2H2 recharges, and it recharges almost instantly, very quick. Excellent. So now, we've completed two of the quests set here. Up here, we're going to pass by a couple of batteries, and we'll look up and see those are good green lights, that one's not good green lights, that one's good green lights, this one's broken. And you can see it's sparking, arcing away there, and it's smoking away as well. So, start a quest. These solar panels generate power when in contact with sunlight. The power is stored in batteries. Prepare the solar panel to generate more power. You can find tools and components in the cargo container on the platform. Use your welder to repair it. Now, I've never, never done this one first, but by the wording of that, I think I'm supposed to have done it. Now let me show you another wee thing about these cargo containers. You can access them from any side, which is handy when you try to create conveyor tubes and linking things up. So, uh, I forgot to look and see what I actually needed. Now I know I need some gun up. Uh, no. I know I will need some computer. I uh, will probably need some bulletproof glass. Uh, maybe some steel plate. So we'll take that and come back if I'm not quite enough. So, push one. Oh, so I need construction components, some couple more girders, and solar cells. Of course I need solar cells. That's the most obvious thing that I forgot about. <laughs> so I need two girders. A little bit of that, which is a construction component. And solar cells. My brain went very dead on in there for a second. I could need 32 of them. Anyway, there we go. Let's bounce up here. Well, you might be wondering, how can I walk around on strange things like this? We are using magnetic buttons, which keeps us 
up to the ground. And that's it. So you'll notice in the bar there's a hunk, hunk, apparently <laughs> hack, and a functional bar. The, the functional bar is all you actually need to get it to for it to be working. So you can still have some items. For instance, there's two rows of construction components. The construction components at the top are not necessary to actually build it and have it working. It's necessary to make it 100%, which gives it a little bit of leeway for taking damage, etc. The hack is when you come across, um, like a doorway, for instance, that does not belong to you, you cannot open that doorway. What you can do is grind down the door, rebuild it, because what you would do is grind it down below the hack level, bring it back up to fu above functional, and you will then own and be able to control whatever it is that you just ground down, be it a seat, a door, whatever it is. So that's what that's for. Anyway, so, complete your ground tasks. Batteries are getting more and more charged because literally using no power. What we have over here is a gravity generator, which allows us to do this in space. Oh, hey, what we jump about. So, the next task, you can see a wee orange box down here, mining. Oh, a lot of mining here. Start task. You can find ore inside asteroids and planets. Equip your drill to enable HUD markers and show you nearby locations of war. Okay, drill and pick up some iron ore. So, number three on my taskbar. A little tip about your taskbar is you see where it says control and number? Yep, you can have up to nine taskbars full of what you would like them to be full of. Uh, why would you need so many things, you may ask? I will show you a quick example. All the blocks, you might want to bring them down. Not all the blocks would fit. So one is light and one is heavy. So you might want to make up two rows of them. Which is actually not really suitable. What, you, what I like to do is have one made up. And if I'm going to change to be making heavy armour, I'll change it over to, all over to heavy armour and then back again. That's quite a more efficient way of using it. Anyway, now that I've got my drill out, you can see these yellow markings. Oh, I see gold. 105.3 metres away. Ah, there's also iron 3.2 metres away. Apparently that way. But I can tell you, this is iron. And this is iron. It's getting dark down here, so I'm going to hit L, put my light on. You can see quite a lot of iron. Behind us is ice. Very nice. So, yeah, let, let's mine out some of it. When you're mining, it's F to pick things items up. Oh, there we go. That has now been done. You can put this iron on the basic refinery to produce iron ingots. When I first played this game, I missed that message. I went and mined, uh, sorry, drilled out some gold and tried to put that in a basic refinery, which doesn't work. <laughs> you need an upgraded refinery to put, to work out gold, silver, um, and some other items, uranium, platinum. Uh, but here's another thing. While you're drilling, you can hold down it to pick it up. Very nice. So, put my drill away. Um, what else is there to do here? Oh, there's a task. Oh, shit, that says. Let's away and have a little look. Ah, that's an interesting ship. Well, I might use my jetpack to have a good look. Oh, push X. Jetpack gets used up. Be very careful, because it's very easy to die. 
whilst using the jetpack. I will show you a quick example of this. Full speed. Oh, that didn't hurt. <coughs> that hurt, but it should have killed me. Um, I, I was actually attempting to show you that when you die, you respawn at your survival kit. If you did not have a working survival kit, medical room, you will have to basically start again and try to find your stuff. Uh, it sounds like a nightmare, it can be, especially when you're days and days and days and <laughs> So, yes, I don't know what here, almost everyone's done. What else have I got to show you? I've got a platform beacon here to show you. Beacon, very self explanatory. But you can have a beacon or you can have an aerial. Now, an aerial has a bigger room distance radius than beacons do. But aerials can allow for you to be hacked. It's, uh, yeah, it's not pleasant. Anyway, back down to this ship. And we shall see what we've got to do here. Oh. So we've got a cargo container. Let's have a little look. Oh, we've got a hydrogen bottle. Oh, have I left my hydrogen bottle up there? Oh, anyway, I've got a hydrogen bottle. A little bit of iron ore. I'll put that in there. Oh, I've got another wee gun. Ah. With some MR20 rifle magazine ammo as well. Isn't that nice? Okay. I like to shut the doors behind me, because in here we've got an airtight sealed room. When we open this door, oh, everything's gone O2 high. It's gone warm. If you look at the bottom of your screen, uh, the bottom right of the box in the centre, you'll notice CO2 and temperature marker there. Now this survival kit is offline. So I'll need to hit K to enter into the control panel to on survival kit. And you look up here, toggle block, it's currently off. Switch it on. So now, if I were to die, and I'm closer to this survival kit, I'll respawn here in the ship. That can be very, very handy. There's the front seat. And you can hit V to get a different view. Hold all, and you can move, have a little move around. So, currently, It doesn't look like I can get any. There's a little tipple going on just now. Control panel. On here there's a hydrogen power driven here. These are great for charging up the batteries. When I look at my batteries here, stored power 9.42. Uh, that is what it's missing. <laughs> Two. 0.94 megawatt hours. Holds a total of 3 for the 2. They're pretty full. So my hydrogen power generator, which is currently not actually doing anything, it's turned off. My O2H2 generator, it's switched on. Everyone looks good. Inventory, which was, we do have some ice. But it's not held in the right place. That is, it's not held in the O2H2 generator. And from here, that allows us to refill our hydrogen bottles or our oxygen bottles. Simply drag it across. Where I am right now, I, I can't because I'm not a suitable port to put it through. I'm just sat on the fleet seat. So we can't pull away. Let's go see why we can't pull away. Aha, it's your bit of environment escaping. So we have another task here. This ship is locked to the platform with a magnetic landing gear. Find a way to unlock the landing gear through the consoles or use your grinder to destroy it. Note that turning it off will not unlock it. Disable the landing gear. 
Right, but when I first played this one, it took me a little bit to think through it. But it was just because when I popped in here, it was on task ship. And I was a little bit, oh, what did I do? You simply come up, click on the landing gear. Now, as it says, you can switch that off. And you see that's gone red on the left of our screen. The block is off, which means it can't be controlled. However, the lock has remained on. I cannot pull away. So, switch it back on, and then we come down to these options here. Simply hit unlock. Now, off, auto lock is off, which is good because by the time I got to the pilot seat, it would have locked back into position. So, we have basically completed all the initial tasks that are set for us here in your first survival mode game. So I could grab some more stuff, but I'm just going to try to get it simple, possibly as quick as I can. I'll jump in here, and I will just show you if I push you. Pushing on, you can see the construction facility, and that is behind me, up on that rock. Ahead of the ship mining, mining outpost. So, next time, we will go and do one, if not both of those. And we will also try to find out what other missions are to do about, because there has to be a refinery somewhere, so I can mine that gold. Give me some gold ingots, make a gold chain, <laughs> something good. Anyway, folks, uh, I hope you find these tutorials useful. Um, hopefully, we'll battle through this whole thing pretty good, and then I can do a full survival starting on a planet and show you how that works as well. But, um, I'll see you for now. Bye bye.